Good morning, friends, and welcome back to the Montessori School of John's Island uh, YouTube page. Um, for you people out there and children out there who are new to YouTube, uh, my daughter has given me some valuable advice that when I do start a YouTube video, that I need to invite you to subscribe to this channel, like it if you like me or watching me, and also turn your notifications on so then when I do put a new video out, you will be notified and you can see what's going on and stay up to date. Um, so I just wanna let you all know that you are missed greatly. I wish you were here in circle with me right now um, and it's just me, I'm very lonely. So I was thinking that we could uh, do some Africa lessons today. Um, so if you're sitting here with your parents, they don't know how to sit for circle. Um, so I'd like us all to do what we do to get ready for circle and you can teach your parents what we do at school to get ready to listen and to learn. All right. Is everyone sitting crisscross? Are we ready? Okay. Crisscross applesauce. Hands in our lap, ginger snap, back straight, chocolate shake, oh my rear, root beer, lip zip. Shh. Now you are ready to listen. So we've been learning about Africa, and this week I have tons of fun cards to share with you, and they are all about animals of Africa. There are so many animals in Africa, and some of them are only live in Africa. They're not even in North America or South America or Europe or Asia. Um, so these animals are very special, and I'm going to talk to you about them. Um, I have a lot of animals here. I want to say nine different animals that we're going to talk about. Um, and that's a lot. So I usually only do one animal or two animals a day during circle, um, depending on the interests of you guys. So you can listen to one animal. You can listen to two animals. If you get tired, turn off the video and then we can start again uh, tomorrow or in two days, whenever you want to learn more about the African animals. All right, so I'm going to start with the ostrich. I'll put the picture up here so you can see what an ostrich looks like, and I'll tell you about it. The ostrich is the world's largest bird and is found in the grasslands of Africa. It can grow to a height of eight feet. Whoa. It does not fly. It has long, powerful legs for running and can reach a speed of 43 miles an hour. So eight feet tall is way taller than me. It's even tall, way taller than Mr. Elva. You know how tall he is. Um, and then at 43 miles per hour, um, that is faster than a car goes in a subdivision, um, but not as fast as a car on a freeway, to put some perspective in for you. And that is the ostrich. It's an interesting looking bird, huh? And it's a bird that doesn't fly. The next animal we have is the lion. Have you seen a lion before in real life? I have, but only in the zoo, not roaming free in the grasslands of Africa. This is what a real lion looks like. Not a cartoon lion, that's a real lion. Lions are the second largest member of the cat family after tigers. So they are cousins to the, the cats that we have in our home. They're found in the grasslands of Africa. 
a small endangered population also exists in India. They live in groups called prides. Female lions do most of the hunting. Oh, that's an interesting fact. The male lions don't do the hunting, mainly the females. Our next animal is a zebra. Does anyone know what a zebra looks like? What colors are they? Did you say white and black? If you said white and black, then you are correct. Zebras are white and black. And here's a lovely picture of a zebra. Zebras are very distinctive African animals. And they're mammals. They are part of the horse family and have black and white stripes. The three types of zebras are the plains zebra, which is the most common, the mountain zebra, which has a white belly and narrow, narrower stripes, and the grevy zebra, which is the largest and is endangered. Do we remember what endangered means? Yeah, it means that they're in trouble, that there's not very many of them around, and we need to protect them. That is endangered. The next animal I have to share with you is the impala. What kind of animal does the impala look like? Kind of like a deer? Yeah, it's got some big pointy, what are those? Horns? Yeah. That's the impala. Impalas are medium-sized antelopes that live in the grasslands of Africa. Oh, it's an antelope. That's an interesting animal. They are fast runners and can leap up to 33 feet. Males grow long spiral horns on their heads. So 33 feet is like taller than some houses. 33 feet is very, very high. That'd be interesting to watch an impala jump that high, wouldn't it? The next animal I have is a rhinoceros. Here is our rhinoceros. Has anyone seen a rhinoceros before? I've seen them in zoos. This is the African species of a rhinoceros. They are black and white rhinos. Both have horns. The white rhino is the second largest land animal in the world, after the elephant. And the rhinos live in the grasslands of Africa. So Africa has a lot of... Um, different kind of biomes. One is the desert. Do we know what the desert is? Yeah, it's all sand. All sand, that's all it is. And the rhinos, it says that the rhinos live in the grasslands. So do they live in the desert? Mm -mm. No, they live where there's grass. The next one we have is the wildebeest. The wildebeest. Wow, I would not want to get near this animal. It looks really big. The wildebeest is also called a new. They are found in the grasslands of Africa. Each year they migrate in search of grazing lands. The wildebeest migration is considered one of the grandest wildlife spectac spectacles sorry, in the world, with over 1.5 million animals moving together across the land. Wow, a million is a lot. 1.5 million of these animals all move together. Migration. That's what migration means where they move from one area to another area. I wonder why they move. Does anyone know why animals would migrate? Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah. First, food. Why do the birds migrate? They cut. They go from um, the north, and then in the winter time, they fly down to the south. What's different about the temperature in the south? It's warmer. Yeah, they like to be warm, so they migrate. The next animal is a hippopotamus. Sometimes we call them just hippos. The hippopotamus is the third largest land mammal in the world, after the elephant and rhino. Despite its large size, it can run faster than humans. Wow. Imagine getting on a race with that guy. He would win. During the day, it remains cool by staying in the water. It is mostly herbivorous. Oh, herbivorous. What does that mean? A herbivore only eats vegetables. That's right. Trees, leaves, plants, no meat. No, no other animals. Doesn't eat any other animals. Uh, this is a quelia. Quelia. It's hard for me to say. Quelia. The quelias are small sparrow-like birds found only in Africa. Oh. Will we be able to see these birds in our backyard? No. They're only in Africa. The red-billed quella is the most numerous bird species in the world. Quellas flock can be so large that it may take one flock up to five hours to fly past. That is a really long time. So have you ever seen birds fly across the sky in a group? That group is called a flock. And imagine looking up and seeing that fly by. It only takes a minute or so, right? For it to fly by and then it's gone. Well, the quellas, when they fly by, you look up and you see a group, and that group is so big, it keeps moving and moving and moving and moving and moving and moving for five hours, through breakfast, through lunch, and almost into dinner. They would still be flying by. Um... Here is another bird that is often called a vanga. Uh, the scientific name for it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to say it, is a xenoporostris. And it's a species of bird found only in Madagascar. I know some friends out there who are fans of Madagascar who might be listening right now. Um, so they call them vangas and they eat insects earthworms, millipedes, lizards, and amphibians. And you can only find them in Madagascar. So, that was a long lesson. If you had listened to that whole thing, I honor you. You're probably going to have to listen to it again, though, because you might forget some of the animals that we learned today. Um... But you can talk about these animals with your parents. You can look in books and find these animals. Um, you can look outside. I know that uh, we talked about cat, cousins of the cats, the lion. You can look outside or maybe you have a pet cat. And you can look at the differences between this cat and the cat that we have around our house. Uh, you can also look outside for birds, and you can see if the bird that you find outside looks like a quella or if it's different. And you can talk about those differences with your family, and you can teach them something new. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for sticking around. Um, there will be more to come, so uh, stay sane. Stay um, outside as much as possible and get your exercise and uh, uh, enjoy this time with your family.
All right, thank you. Bye-bye.